Hello and welcome back to Exothermic Plays Games. I'm Exothermic and the date today is Monday, August 26th, 2024. I've been doing a countdown of my favorite video games of all time through each day of the year, and coming in at number 127 is Gauntlet Legends. This game originally released in arcades in October of 1998, though my interaction with it is almost exclusively through the Nintendo 64 port that came out a year later. It was an attempt to, at the time, modernize my 300th favorite game, Gauntlet, bringing it into a three-dimensional space and adding some sorely needed story elements. If anything, it blows my mind that this was released as an arcade game first, because if you were going to beat the whole game with some friends, not only would it cost a good chunk of quarters, but you'd spend your whole day in front of that machine. And that blows my mind, because the handful of times I've seen one of these cabinets in the wild, there's no chairs. No one ever puts chairs in front of this cabinet. I don't get it. In fact, in HowLongToBeat.com, they list this game's completion time as 28 hours. That's insane for an arcade game. Okay, you didn't have to do it in one sitting. Uh, the game generated passwords you could input to save even at the arcade and come back to it with your friends later. But still, the game encourages you to spend a lot of time with it, and it's thankfully very easy to do so. You make a character from some different fantasy classes. They're generally not that different from each other in attack types, though they do get some pretty different base stats. In this gameplay, I'm playing a wizard. Uh, your basic attacks and everything are all pretty comparable across the different classes. It's largely different art assets for, again, for the basic attacks. But you do get different special attacks. There's a meter above your health that charges over time, and you can spend it to do what's called turbo attacks. Depending on how full the meter is, it'll unleash different class-dependent abilities. The first level for everyone is their basic attack, but it hits a little harder. After that, though, they're all different. Wizard's middle tier turbo is a rock shower, and then the top tier one summons a giant skull that launches itself in a straight line, even going off screen to continue damaging everything it runs through. Due to the way it can even hit things off screen, you can really abuse this a bit, and that's a good thing. Unlike in previous Gauntlet games, your characters can actually level up and progress over time. You gain experience largely from killing enemies, and the way they spawn is from hives or camps or cursed statues or whatever makes sense for that enemy. They'll do this repeatedly until you destroy whatever it is they're coming from. That means that if there's an area spawning an endless stream of units, but you can position yourself so that they have to funnel through a choke point to get to you, meaning they keep building up behind that point while you just keep killing the couple things in front, that's great. Then, when it's all nice and full back there, you fire off your big turbo attack and wipe the screen, getting tons of experience. Each time you level up, your stats increase, but that's not the only way to improve your character. You also find gold in a variety of ways, such as in chests, or from destructible items, or even just laying around. You can spend that gold in a shop to buy stat increases or items. The items in this game are actually one of my favorite things about it. There are keys and potions, which are one time use do them and they're done things. Keys unlock stuff. Wow. And potions kill stuff, most notably death, which sometimes is hiding in chests, just lurking, waiting to get you. But the other items? Great stuff. They all do different things, like make you invisible, or give you a multi-shot, or fire breath, or you float, or so many more, and they don't just get consumed when you use them. They're actually something you can toggle, and it drains a timer on the item that gets extended by picking up more of that item. You can stack them, or quickly switch between them, and when you run into harder enemies, it's a great little juggle of balancing those items so you're not wasting the time on them. Speaking of harder enemies, most enemies in this game are just pretty easy. They're fodder for you to mow through as you get to the actually interesting foes. 
The game has a ton of different environments with different worlds you'll unlock as you progress, and each place has a bunch of different enemies. You unlock new worlds by activating these hidden obelisks throughout other worlds, often gated behind locked doors and switches and even in hidden areas behind walls that will be destroyed when you attack them, as a surprise. The exploration and discovery of this game is phenomenal because there's a lot of it and it's all really easy to just stumble upon without even trying. Despite the utter lack of challenge in this exploration itself, it's still exciting every time you find something. Within each world, there's different stages. Really, it's a maze. A, uh, gauntlet, if you will. Each of these stages has a starting point where you spawn in and a portal to leave at the end. And of course, a myriad of enemies and obstacles between you. You're working through that world in order, and at the end of each world is a big bad boss. Now, those actually provide some challenge and are fun to fight against. But you're going to have a potentially hard time if you don't get the hidden item to help against each one. In other worlds, you'll find a key item that can be used on different bosses. It's done automatically if you have it in your inventory. For example, the scimitar that helps against the second world's boss is found in the first world. And you, you have to go off the beaten path to find it. You do have to find it. The zone designs are all really different and I think pretty well done. Yeah, the graphics sure look 25 years old, but the design is so well done they don't really feel that old to me. It all still just works. So much of this game just works, despite its obvious age. My brothers and I played an outrageous amount of Gauntlet Legends in the late 90s and early 2000s, cumulatively putting on likely a thousand or more hours on it. All of the gameplay here is single player, at least that I recorded, but the true fun comes from the couch co-op and the more people, well up to four, the better. I'm delighted to report that the game still holds and plays just as well as I remembered it. It was really hard for me to shelve it and move on to recording for tomorrow's game. Speaking of, join me tomorrow as I talk about my 127th favorite game where I put increasingly large amounts of fiction into my historical fiction.